How's it going, Teal Boys? It is time to start the playoffs. Uh, we are in the quarterfinals as the number one seed against number 19, Auburn, who is the bottom seed, the eight seed. Uh, Auburn has made it to the playoffs because they managed to win the SEC, even though they are nine and four. I don't know. I'm going into this menu, but the game, the way that you set up the playoff gets a little bit buggy, so uh, it's not actually showing our matchup, uh, but... Rest assured, they're a pretty solid team. Let me go ahead and check something. We didn't look at the end of the last episode at our All-American list. And the headline there, Coastal Carolina leads the nation in the number of All-Americans. So how many do we actually have? Nobody on the offense right away. Uh, Sidney McRae, so nobody on the offense at all on the first team All-NCAA. But then we have Sidney McRae. There's Emmanuel Bush. Uh, Kale Mackey jumps up there. Will Phillips. Okay, a lot of defensive players. Manny Stokes somehow makes it. Uh, Logan Smith. And I got to assume Marquise Jackson here at the returner spot. Uh, that's a lot of players. That's just the first team All-Americans. How about the second team? Do we have anybody on offense there? No. Uh, but we bring in another defensive player in John Taylor. Anybody else? Okay, so one second team. How about the freshman all NCA? Uh, okay, Radon Randell is up there as the quarterback. That's great news for our future that our quarterback is uh, a freshman and is an uh, all American. Uh, Leon Sandcastle and Aaron Jenkins on the defense and Logan Smith. I forgot that we had uh, a freshman at free safety and strong safety. They're going to be pretty dang solid next year. So is Leon. Um, so three defensive backs there. I got to assume the All-ACC has a lot of us. No, Radon as the quarterback. Nobody except for Willie Moyes uh, on offense. But then defense, let's see, Sidney McRae, uh, Emmanuel Bush, John Taylor, Kale Mackey, Will Phillips, Manny Stokes, Leon Sandcastle, my goodness, Logan Smith, and Marquise Jackson, all first team uh, conference. And the second team, we've got Willie Lampkin. Is it Willie? Yeah, Willie Lampkin, uh, Robert Gray, Durham Finch, Don Riley, Charles Hart, Aaron Jenkins. Okay, that's pretty crazy. We had uh, a lot of uh, conference and All-American honors. That is impressive. Now, can we take a look at Auburn here? Um, I just want to see their ranking. What were they, 18th? in the in the bcs so let's scroll down to that and no they're 19 so they are let's see first off uh 95 overall school let's see started with a loss against number three texas that's nothing bad necessarily they lost to a ranked texas a&m they lost to a number 12 georgia and they lost to bama in the iron bowl but then uh got their revenge against georgia in the championship game so the tigers seem pretty solid the question is can we beat them? Again, 95 overall with a 90 offense and a 99 defense. So while we might have the highest statistically rated defense in the country, uh, their overall is much, much higher than ours. Uh, Auburn doesn't really have crazy uniform stuff, do they? Just the one helmet, just the two jerseys, just the one pants. So uh, believe it or not, we're just going to have Auburn wear their away uniforms. <laughs> wow, ultra crazy. Uh, let's... We're going to wear a different combination for each round of these playoffs, I think. Uh, hopefully culminating with just our standard homes in the national championship. Obviously the black helmet, but we'll go uh, black jersey and teal pants for this time. And then in the semifinal, maybe we'll go teal jersey and black pants. And then maybe for the national championship game, we'll keep it all teal. Uh, but let's see. Can we go ahead and win this game? So looking at these rankings, Auburn, again, not a great offense. They seem to pass the ball pretty well, but their defense is pretty locked down. Not quite as good as ours. They do manage to actually stop the pass. I'm very worried about our offense's ability to score some points, but uh, special teams, maybe that's all that we need. Marquise, uh, pretty impressive. Their top players for next season are a punter, a D-tackle, and a right guard. Do they have any injured players? They do have a quarterback out. I'm curious, is Garnett their starter? That could be absolutely massive in us maybe getting through to the next round. It is a rainy night here at Hard Rock Stadium as we will kick these playoffs underway. Uh, 
You guys might remember last year we lost a uh, heartbreaker to Oklahoma in our quarterfinal match. So hopefully we'll avoid that. We win the toss. We'll elect to kick this one off. And with just a th four mile an hour wind, I can't read it. Uh, we'll kick it off. They're going to return it. And oh, no, this is not a great start. Decent return. Actually, we kept them inside the 25. So I don't know what I'm talking about today. Not sure what we're going to do on defense today. We'll see uh, how Auburn decides to come out and start playing this game. It's going to be an option out towards the edge. And Don Riley is there to drop Antoine Price for a loss of three yards to start this game. Now, I went ahead and checked in Garnett. The quarterback who is injured for Auburn was their starter. He was a 92 overall quarterback. This backup is only like 78 overall. So uh, pretty heartbreaking for Auburn fans. They get a good run there on second down. But I mean, this guy's not going to be nearly as efficient as their real starter would be. And hopefully we'll be able to stop him. They're going to step back looking to throw on third down. And well, he's got the job done so far. Finding Barrett Powell for eight yards. I'm assuming that their game plan will be to run the ball as much as they can in this one. Hopefully we'll be able to beat them as, well, they're going to keep passing. Big hit on Elijah Canyon, but he holds on through the contact. Auburn coming out pretty quick here on offense. We got to stop on the first play, but since then they've been moving pretty well on this down. Looking to pass. Leon got burned, couldn't get the tackle, and so we give up yet another first down. Backup quarterback, Will Franklin, 3-3 three three to start this one as we bring the safety blitz. And it gets into the backfield. We do finally slow them down. And uh-oh, potentially an injury for the running back. Antoine Price, slow to get up there, limped off the field. It would not be good for Auburn if it's their starting running back and their starting quarterback out for this game. Uh, though, I got to be honest, it would be pretty useful for us. The last thing that I want to do is lose this game. <laughs> we got to at least make it through the first round. They're going to go with the slip screen. Kale Mackey can't get off his block. Don Riley misses the tackle. Finally, we get up there and we do stop Lewis McLeod. But, uh, still gets three yards. Unfortunately for him, four yards too few. Fourth and four. They're bringing out the field goal team. I think they have the wind at their back, so... Shouldn't be too worried about the power, and he missed it, pushed it right, had the distance, but no points for the Auburn Tigers on their first drive of the game. Maybe it's a tactical decision. They know they have a strong defense. Maybe their special teams isn't so great. If you kick the field goal, you've got to kick off to Marquise Jackson, and, uh, well, ask Notre Dame how that went. The read option on our first play from scrimmage is only good for two, so we'll step back looking to throw... On second down, throwing the timing route. We find Mobley, but he can't hold on through the contact. Maybe threw it a little bit early, and now we have a third and long. And uh-oh, the running back for Auburn is out for the rest of the game. So two big pieces injured for the Tigers at this point. We'll see uh, if that affects their offense's ability to move the ball and how much it does so. Scrambling here, late throw. It's picked up. I don't know what I'm doing there. Uh, just gifted them the turnover. Tried to get it to Marquise. Probably should have just scrambled, but I don't think we got the first down scrambling. So, uh, okay. Not optimal. Believe it or not, especially if you've seen me play this game in the past, uh, I think that's only Radon's seventh interception of the season, which is tremendously low as, wow, that man, Elijah Canyon, wide open once again. You know what? This is a backup quarterback. We're going to bring pressure on him all game long. I think that's got to be the strategy as they hand it off a little bit of a draw maybe. They lose a yard there. I'd like to just keep bringing different looks though as we try to pressure this quarterback. It looks like they want to throw a lot in this game so the more uncomfortable we can make this guy the better. Although my goodness he had all the time in the pocket eventually decided to scramble but still gets sacked by Durham Finch there. That one brings up a third and goal from outside the 10 as they'll step back. It's another slip screen, and we'll drop them for a loss of three. Fourth and goal. They should be able to hit this field goal, but who knows? Maybe they miss. Push the first one right. Now from the right hash, can they push it left? I wouldn't mind it. Uh, kick is up, and he got that one right down the middle. Honestly, doesn't seem like this kicker has great power. We might be near the edge of his range. 
And by scoring points, Auburn might take the lead, but they have to kick off to Marquise. I don't expect necessarily great things out of this game, but you never know when Marquise is returning. Uh, so we're going to give him a chance. Pretty much every opportunity we get in this one. First things first, though, at this point, the offense needs to get some yards. Uh, basically three and out the last drive through a, an interception. We need to get at least a first down. And then once we can manage to get the first down, we're going to need to find the end zone. Trying to run the ball on second and two. I don't feel confident about this one, but maybe we can get it upfield or maybe we'll just lose a yard and it's third and three. Again, this Auburn defense is 99 overall, so we expect them to be pretty solid. Oh, they're just too good for me right now. Fourth and one, I think we kick this. Our defense has done a decent job so far so i'm gonna try to punt this ball away and just hope that it's gets downfield we need to cheese it and good not returnable to go out of bounds inside the 35 uh the offense is gonna be struggling i think all game long my hope is just that we can score on special teams or get lucky maybe a pick six gotta hope for the best there quarterback keeps it on that one and picks up two yards not the best option defense you'll see, but it kind of got the job done. Didn't give up a whole lot. Play action on this one. Over the middle, they have a man wide open. Uh, Kale just kind of got beat, and it's another first down. Again, this quarterback is like 78, 79 overall. He's a perfect 8 of 8 through the air so far on this one. Uh, the only thing saving me right now is that they keep running options. Every Oh, that's the end of the first quarter already. Uh, okay. Well, we're losing. We do get the ball at halftime, so as long as we can keep it within a possession, we will have a decent chance, but offense needs to find the drive gear and uh, get this one going. I don't even know if that made any sense, uh, but we just need to score some points. Second and 13, stepping back to pass. Quarterback scrambling. I'm just going to go ahead and miss a sack, and then he's going to slide down and get himself a third and five. Let's see if we can do that again. Maybe we'll be able to stop in this town. Time on third down. My goodness, I can't talk to save my life. They're going to throw the quarter out. Mackey gets beat, and it's a first down. Don't think it's going to help, but we're bringing the pressure once again. Stepping back to throw. Okay, we held them. Forced him to throw to the tight end. Got the easy tackle. Quarterback's now averaging... Uh, just under 10 yards per reception, which is not great news for us. This is a successful run for them. Gets them seven. Brings up a third and four. Question here is, can we get the stop on third down? Expecting the pass. They will step back. And, oh, running back open. We get the tackle. It's fourth and one. We're tackling well today. But we're just allowing them to get into these spots. Fourth and one. And Auburn's going to go for it. Maybe expecting the run on this one. And, well, maybe we will see the field goal team come out because a false start from the offensive line backs them up five. And they're kicking into the four-mile-an-hour wind, I think, this quarter. So we're going to send Marquise back to return this. I think this should be fieldable. Maybe we could kick six Auburn as... Oh, that one just barely didn't have the distance. It's another miss for this kicker, and I think it was just short. Maybe by a yard. I thought that almost hit the crossbar it might have well this is turning out to be a bit of a boring game so far nothing impressive happening through almost a quarter and a half we're trying to play action trying to get outside the pocket and we're just gonna throw the ball away nowhere for radon to go as he starts the game 0 for 3 with a pick i legitimately don't know how we're gonna win this game because we can't throw the ball we can't run with the ball Finally, a completion to DJ Johnson, but it's good for what? Yeah, three yards. I think this just comes down to them pressing up on Marquise and us getting lucky with him going deep. I don't know, third and seven. I'm going with a four vert just to hope for the best outside the pocket. Maybe somebody open. Malcolm Williams ran a really weird route. I almost used him out of position. Luckily got him back and we got our first first down. Not only that, but we get across midfield here. Four minutes left in the half. They're looking like they want to bring some pressure. I'm going to fake him out. Look to the sideline. We're still running the play. It's a handoff up the middle, and Beasley gets absolutely crushed for a loss of two there. 
Oh, man. We have quite a few yards to get into field goal range. And at this point, that's exactly what I'm hoping for. Second down. Going to get outside the pocket. And we're going to scramble with Radon Randall. Hopefully, he can get to the edge. And he does get us the first down. I really have to utilize his legs today. I'm just not certain that this offense is going to work without us scrambling or using a ton of options. So... We'll try what we can running the ball. It's just not quite there yet. Uh, at least we got positive yards on that one. And with the wind at our back, we should pretty much be in field goal range. Obviously, you want to get as far as you can. Scrambling again. <laughs> I just, I don't feel comfortable throwing. I don't feel comfortable handing the ball off. So our offense kind of resembles that of my middle school football team where we never won a game. And the quarterback, of course, as it usually is in middle school, is the best athlete, and he just ran around and did what he could. Uh, a decent handoff on the counter for Braden Bennett. Maybe one block short of taking that one to the house. Gets us a first down. We've got ourselves our first trip to the red zone in this game. Let's see if we can continue to run the ball with any success. Nope, never mind. Bennett gets crushed at the line that time. Again, we would settle for a field goal. I just got to make sure that we don't uh, lose possession at all. Second and 10, stepping back to throw the timing route. Mobley, it's over his head. He was wide open. That's a touchdown otherwise. Just a disappointing showing from Radon so far. We'll look to get outside the pocket. Right bumper might come open. No, A kind of did. And I, I meant to hit A. I hit right bumper anyways, almost through the pick. So just let me kick this field goal. Please don't miss it, goon. And okay, we can just, I don't know. We can live with a tie ball game, I think. One minute and 38 seconds left on the clock for the Auburn Tigers. As we near halftime, they're actually going to return this kick. And that's a great decision. There is a flag though. So I imagine this one's coming back. A clipping. They're going to hate that. They lost a few seconds and lost a bunch of yards. So a minute and 33 now, all their timeouts. They're gonna step back and actually hand this one off on first down. Came out in the 3-3-5 and immediately get punished for it. But I'm just going to assume that at some point they're gonna start passing the football. First and 10, stepping back this time. They go with the screen and that's a tackle for loss. The clock will not be moving. They take the time out there. You never know, There's uh, there's a chance that we could get the ball here and take the lead. Saw that coming over the middle, and we actually broke up the pass. So the first incompletion for this Auburn quarterback gives us the uh, third and 12, where we'll try to defend against the slip screen. They've got great blocking out in front. Jenkins can't get the tackle, but slows him down enough, and we can take the timeout with a minute and 13 left in the half. We can maybe get Marquise involved on this play. The passing hasn't been there for him, and... Well, we've only allowed Auburn to score once, so not a whole lot of touches for arguably the star player on this team. He fields the punt cleanly, makes a man miss, makes another man miss. He's not going to have the speed outrun chunky Mr. 51 there, but he gets his great field position nonetheless with a minute to work with at the end of this first half. Obviously, the question is... What could our boy Radon do? It looks like they want to bring a little bit of pressure on this one. And it is a safety blitz. I'm just going to throw the safe one. Give it to Logan Malden. Take the yards and get out of bounds to stop the clock. The quicker this offense finds a little bit of rhythm, the quicker it is that we can maybe take the lead. As outside the pocket, B's open, A's open. But we're going to scramble because look at the blocking downfield from the wide receivers. Radon gets 19 on the scramble and gets to the 11-yard lines. So a chance to be the first to find the end zone. A little shift there. As we'll snap the ball, right? Bumper could be open. Brayden Bennett holds on to it, fighting for every yard. We're going to take our second time out there. Second and three. My clock management has not been the best so far this season. So we'll hope to avoid any issues there as we will step back to pass. Honestly, I thought I called a run, but uh, it doesn't seem that's the case. Right bumper was wide open, but we get hit as we're throwing, and it's incomplete. That's brutal. It should have been a touchdown. Instead, it's third down as we will again step back to pass. We'll get outside the pocket. Braden Bennett has it. It's fourth and two. We're going to go for this. Uh, I'm taking the timeout. I've changed my mind. I'm taking the coward's way out. 30 seconds left. 
Our defense has been great. I'm going to take the points and take the lead, knowing that we get the ball to start the third quarter. A touchdown would have been incredible there, but I just can't leave points off the board in a low-scoring game. So now with just 28 seconds left, we'll give them a returnable kick. That'll burn a few seconds. Uh, Auburn, only two timeouts to work with. I think that we could probably hold them at least to a field goal attempt. Question's going to be, what can our coverage do to slow these guys down? They step back to throw over the middle. Catch is made, and he got the first down. Second timeout taken by Auburn with 19 seconds left. Could be making a tactical mistake here, but we'll just continue to let them pass. They're going with the slip screen again, and I think that's going to be it for the half. Uh, clock's going to be running second and 12. They will step back to throw. This is the final play of the half, and it is completed. But again, clock strikes zero. Oh, thankfully, no touchdown there. We head into the locker room up 6-3. This is not the game that I expected coming in, but we are winning it, and we do get the ball. We need to score a touchdown, I think, or at least another field goal uh, on the opening drive of the second half, but... It's up to the offense to win this game for us. The defense has been phenomenal. Uh, but the offense, if they can figure some things out, uh, should be able to help us run away with this game. So we will be back to return. It's at the back of the end zone. I'm bringing it. <laughs> you already know. It would be so foolish not to give this man a chance to return the ball. And Marquise, so close. Regardless, gets great field position for us. But so close to taking that from the back of the end zone. And now we can just continue to try to move the ball. We're going to see whatever we can do to get things moving. I think that we do just have to be passing mostly because the running game has been pretty rough. And when we put the ball on the ground, I think it's got to be the option, which we're going to try on second and 10. It is going to have to be handed off. And Beasley broke a tackle. Okay. Okay. Bounced off another guy, got nine yards for us, and we're moving the ball a little bit on this drive. Can we pick up the first down here? Third and two. We will look to throw, and it looks like they want to bring some pressure off the corner. They do bring that pressure outside the pocket. We're wide open. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. A was wide open downfield. I didn't get the pass off in time. Oh, what am I doing? No matter what, I think I should have been able to run for that one, but it doesn't happen. Uh, we're going to go for it on fourth down. Hoping for the best. Looks like they want to bring pressure off the edge. I'm going to throw a tough one. Mobley is open. He gets the catch. And he holds on as he gets pushed out of bounds. Oh, that was a scary throw to make. But thankfully, he got the separation. We get the completion. Right on throwing it under 50% today. With just 66 yards through the air and an interception. It's been pretty disappointing. Thankfully... He's been able to contribute in other ways. The scrambling, the option keepers have been working okay. For us at this point, getting three yards on a run on first down is a big deal. They want to bring pressure, which is kind of painful for us running this counter, but we're going to run it anyways, and I should not have done it because the man bringing the blitz immediately gets there, and we lose all the yards and more that we had gained on first down. Two of seven on third downs, and we get to contend with a pretty long one this time out. Seeing what we can do, throwing the ball, stepping back, the timing route. Finally, we find Mobley, and oh, so close to breaking his tackle, but he does get the first down. This might be our most impressive drive yet in terms of how long we've managed to stay out onto the field. They're bringing a lot of pressure as we try to run once again. Thankfully, getting positive yards, but my goodness, we're struggling. Just nothing there for us so far in the running game. Try to throw one to Mobley, and that's only going to be a couple of yards. And again, we've got a third down. So at this point, we are in field goal range now inside the red zone. But what are we going to be able to do with that? Right bumper maybe coming open. It's Brayden Bennett. He dropped the ball. It hit him in the hands, and he, he had a touchdown. But he drops it. Oh my goodness, I got to take the points. I got to kick the field goal. Fourth and six is a little bit too long. Oh, that hurts so, so much. We are unable to be the first team to find the end zone in this game. And it's going to have to be the defense keeping Auburn out. 
as they have had a pretty solid game so far. We'll see what they can do on this drive as kind of expecting a run to open things off. We know that we ought to watch out for the screens. They've been throwing those a lot. This one, just a short throw over the middle, but it turns into seven. They open it up with a pass, and now we're going to bring the safety blitz on second and three. So I expect the run, and it's there. Will Phillips, we jump the gap. Uh, we hit him behind the line. We force the third down. All I can think about at this point is what this game would look like if Auburn had their starting running back and uh, quarterback in this game because we have been pretty lucky, all things considered. Trying to watch everything that we can, and it's Manny Stokes getting beat over the middle on the slant route. Still just a single incompletion for this quarterback as they put the man in motion. He comes back, and it's going to be a run on first down. Will Phillips can't break the block. Kale Mackey, good job wrapping up McLeod, but we gave up eight yards on the first down handoff. Well, we're taking a big risk this time out, bringing a lot of pressure as they will go to the air. Quarterback throwing it on the run, off balance, finds a man, and oh my gosh, he got upended on that one by Kale Mackey. But again, they get positive yards and another first down. Got to question where the stop is going to come from at this point as they're doing such a good job. Stepping back to throw once again. Man open. Don Riley gets a good tackle. We're just not there. And they're just wide open. Easy catches. The plays where we don't give up a lot of yards, it doesn't matter because they just get them so consistently compared to us. You know, they run it up the middle. They get an easy three is what it feels like. Let's see what we can do on this third and three. Looking to bring a little bit of pressure. It is a run out towards the edge. Sandcastle. Of all people with the big hit in the backfield to bring up the fourth and five. And once again in this game, it's going to be the field goal team out. Uh, I didn't go into the, uh, the fielding. They were short. Oh my gosh. The kick again, accurate. But he just can't quite get the distance. That's two that are just under the crossbar. So what can we do? offense <laughs> are they gonna get into field goal range at the very least i wouldn't complain about that because at least we could extend it to above a touchdown lead and with that we're gonna come to the end of the third quarter i think it's in our best interest to get out of this game as soon as possible so we'll let the third quarter come to a close and start burning out the clock on the fourth uh nine three nine exciting game offensively uh just impressive from a defensive standpoint maybe we can break it and get into the end zone here in the fourth quarter it's certainly not going to be easy but we got to hope for the best i'm going to send marquis deep on this one no deep safety maybe he burns his man and you know what i'm going to throw it up for him he's got a step he came down with it it was a one-handed catch through contact and he actually breaks the school record for receiving yards in a season at that point 1,087 with that one. Look at this catch. Goes up with one hand. Immediately gets it into the bread basket. And we're downfield pretty far now. Took a chance. Lofted one up. And it's the biggest play of the game, I think, uh, for both sides at this point. As we are nearing the red zone. A handoff to CJ gets us pretty much into it. Wow. Not sure how that turned into eight. But can't complain about it. So now we're in field goal range. But can we find the end zone? It's the question of the game. I'm not sure anything. Oh my gosh, there it is. Right on Randall. Makes a man miss on the option. Then he gets in 21 yards to the house. This game is firmly in our control now. Auburn held just to three points at this point. They're missing field goals left and right. I feel very confident our defense can hold them again. And we're going to go for two. Try to extend the lead just a little bit more. As we see, A was open there if I threw it on time. Risky one. Mobley can't hold on to it in the corner of the end zone. Ah, uh, just didn't quite feel right. I don't like that our guys are just standing around there. I wish they would have started moving earlier, but uh, still up 15-3. A two-score lead, but not a two-touchdown lead at this point. As this kick, once again, is going to be returned by Auburn. This is the most kick returns we've had to face off against. We're doing a pretty good job so far today. So with 5-13 left in the game, can the defense continue to hold? They've done a good job. We've allowed them to get into field goal range plenty of times. The old bend but don't break. And oh no, this is not good. Will Phillips 
Aaron Jenkins chasing down Larry Henderson, but 41 yards given up that early in the drive hurts quite a bit. And again, this backup quarterback, 79 overall, is throwing above 95% on the game. Just not missing his man. Here's the option out towards the edge, and there it is. Durham Finch gets the early tackle for loss. Try to stunt any momentum that they've started to gain here on this drive. I'm sure that we'll see uh, a completion here or something. No, a run out towards the edge, and again, we get the tackle. So our rush defense really holding up so far in this game. We know that they are going to go to the air here. Can we stop it? Will we see an out route? No, it's going to be a screen. Uh, that's a screen we haven't seen before. It was a screen to the wide receiver. I was very worried about what was going on. We hold them, but we only hold them to a fourth and 12. Uh, they're going to go for it. Can we get this stop? Stepping back to pass. Just really trying to cover over the middle. Don't want to give up something easy. I'm fine with that. They throw it short of the line to gain. And we get the turnover on downs. So and with 348, I think I got to start burning the clock on this one. Certainly would not call this a spectacular win. Or would I call it a pretty win? But a win is a win, especially when we're here in the playoffs. And it looks like we're going to make it through to the semifinal round. The real question is, who is it that we're going to face on second and one? A big chance to pick up a first here, and CJ Beasley manages to get that done. So, again, the clock going to continue to burn. I'll expect to see Auburn start to take their timeouts after this play. Otherwise, they'd be waving the white flag, and honestly, still a pretty close game. Uh, they're not going to take them, it seems. How about on this one? Under two minutes to play. In the Orange Bowl, the quarterfinal matchup, and there it is. Okay, we need to get at least one more first down then. 33% on the day for our uh, third downs, but I'm not certain we have this one. Third and four, going with the option. Radon, plenty of space. Radon might be gone. Can't quite pick up the block. It does actually go out of bounds, which is kind of a bummer, but there's the first down that we needed. The red shirt freshman quarterback, 90 yards on the ground for him. As we'll hand the ball off again, and the blocking has been pretty phenomenal so far on this drive as Auburn is forced to take their second time out of the game. And to try and force them just to take that third, we'll just go with a dive up the middle on second and three, cut it out to the edge, and find the first down. So final timeout taken for the Tigers. And at this point, it would take an absolute disaster for us to lose this one. Uh, maybe we should just be taking these. Don't want to fumble the ball. But aside from that, this one should be wrapped up. We'll let this one tick below a minute on this play as we got to take every second of game clock or play clock available to us. Braden gets back to the line, but on third down, that's going to be enough for us to take the knee. And finally, we can get a win in the playoffs. Oh, it's been a long time coming. This was a battle through and through. Clock finally hits that triple zeros and we get out of here with three field goals and a touchdown on the day. We held Auburn to just three points. Uh, it feels good to get the win. We get a lot of XP, but we cannot play like this if we're going to make it to the national championship game. Got to play much better in our semifinal matchup. It has been a long time coming, but... We have finally, finally won a playoff game. Uh, just a rough one all around. We held them to 22 on the ground, but 222 through the air. Uh, we had 149 rushing and 126 passing ourselves. We won the time of possession battle, but that early interception hurt quite a bit. Just a struggle on both sides. Radon's our player of the game on the offense. Um, pretty mediocre day for him, all things considered. Had most of the yards and, and had the only touchdown. Will Phillips with four tackles for loss is really big. How about their quarterback stepping in as a backup, like 79 overall, 23 of 24 for 222 yards is absolutely uh, mind-boggling. That's just what happens when quarterbacks play us, though. We make them look really, really good. So we have won the Orange Bowl, but that's not really what we care about let's go ahead and sim the rest of the games for this first round of the playoffs 
And make sure that we've got it all good. I've got to remember the matchups. I'll see them, uh, or I'll notice them when they pop up. The Cotton Bowl between USC and Oklahoma is one of them. Who's going to win this one? Kind of uh, pulling for USC. I think they might be a little bit easier matchup. And it is the Sooners. Kind of not surprising. They went at 41 to 24. So the 9 and 4 Pac 12 champions can't win it, believe it or not. Uh, neither could the 9 and 4 SEC champions. Our next game USF and Penn State. We already beat Penn State this season. I'm curious if USF can do the same. Uh, I didn't read that properly all the way through. Nittany Lions win it 31 to 20. In our final game between Nebraska and Texas, this is a, a really cool playoff matchup in the Fiesta Bowl. Who's going to be it that takes it home? Curious. Overtime win for the Longhorns. The Cornhuskers can't quite pull it out. It's 30 to 24. And Texas is going to hang on to make it through to the semifinal round. So now we can go back into the utility tool and load up our playoff into step two. And as it loads in here, we can see the results. Seems like it worked pretty well. Uh, the one seed wins. The five seed wins. Technically the only upset, although I think most people would have Penn State beating South Florida. Uh, but then the two and the three seed wins. So not a whole lot of chaos they're pretty chalky game but we will be lined up to play penn state a rematch against them in the rose bowl game and in the sugar bowl it's oklahoma versus texas that is so so cool uh you love to see it little red river shootout but in the semifinals of the playoffs so we'll go ahead and save that and as we load back in, we can see now we are matched up with Penn State. I think that we should be able to beat them. Again, it's glitching, so we can't technically see the uh, the matchup info, which is kind of a shame. I can't get it to pop up no matter what. Uh, let's go into our top 25 polls. That way we can see. Have I been saying that we beat these guys? I, I'm remembering now. It was an overtime loss. That's why we're 13-1 and and not 14-0. and uh 40 to 37 that's right we kicked the field goal or something they come out on top that time uh so i don't know why i thought we won maybe i'm just confusing it with like notre dame or something but uh i expect to come out and get the win it was a game in which we didn't have radon or marquise both of them will be healthy for this matchup so i will expect for us to be able to get our revenge in this one and move on to the college football playoff national championship game of course texas and oklahoma both 99 overall teams that will have to face penn state's a 99 overall team uh we're just a lowly 93 so it will not be the easiest game of uh of our season that's for sure unfortunately though that's gonna have to do it for this episode if you enjoyed the video, if you like a nice defensive struggle in a game, please feel free to hit the like button uh, and subscribe if you haven't already. That way you can get notified when these new videos get posted. And while you're down there, you can head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as links to my Twitter and our community Discord. And as always, the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.